No, you're not in fact there, because this isn't a school bathroom in Japan. It's a house bathroom in my house. And you're not a cute toilet ghost. Your camera I sat up on the toilet five minutes ago so that I could film this intro. And I'm not a cute girl with rather slugs who in the initial pilot wanted to kill her ex but changed her mind in the actual manga and asked for a boyfriend instead. I'm a kid excessively obsessing over said anime to the point where I've made multiple tutorials on the things I've made from it, one of which you're watching now. Because today, I'm gonna show you how I winged my way into making a decent looking Yashiro cosplay. Competence not included. <laughs> using this fabric from my mom's fabric stash collection thing. I don't actually know what it's called and I don't know why one side is shiny and one side is matte but I'm gonna be using the matte side as the right side up and let's hope I don't run out of fabric in the middle of this because I actually don't know if this will be enough. So let's start by first making the skirt. So first I knew I wanted the skirt to be a circle skirt but I wasn't sure if I'd have enough fabric to do a full circle skirt so I just kind of winged it along the way. I guess that it would end up somewhere between a half circle skirt or a three-fourths to full circle skirt. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I just think the most important important part of a circle skirt is the radius of the waist so that you know it can actually fit you which I got by using a circle skirt calculator which for some reason measures in kilometers as well. Anyway, go ahead and make your circle skirt pattern out of whatever My Little Pony wrapping paper you want. Just make sure to use your correct waist radius which for me was 0.000059 nautical miles. Anyway, I just made that and since I realized I kinda had limited fabric space, I folded over the pattern where it wouldn't fit so that I could try to make it fit because... Uh, anyway, I winged it and I mean it turned out okay and this is what I ended up with. I sewed the skirt panels together and soon I ended up with one big skirt piece. I laid it out on a big piece of cheap fabric so it would be the lining. I know it isn't the right color but let's not talk about that. Then I just basted it on to keep it in place. Then I cut out the whole circle skirt. Next, I sat there staring at the skirt for the next 5 minutes wondering what the next step was. That turned out to be to sketch out a scallop shape which I know would probably come out better if I measured it but I was kinda lazy and I wanted to wing it but then I realized that winging it was still too much work for me so I extra winged it by sewing directly and hoping for the best. Cut off the extra fabric and also along the curved edge cut small slits so that when you turn it right side out it will look nice. Speaking of that, flip the skirt right side out. I don't know why this was so fun but if circle skirts didn't take up so much fabric I'd make more just so that I could flip them right side out. And it's probably best to iron the seams flat but I don't like ironing things and so I will not. Anyway, close it off by sewing the lining layer to the lining layer and the top layer to the top layer. I will not explain this further because I don't understand either. Now we're done with the skirt part and look at the cool scallop edge! Time to make the bodice. I doubled over a piece of fabric, then I put on a shirt and safety pinned where my waist was, then I used that shirt as a template to trace out the bodice shape. And then I used scissors to cut it open. No wait, that sounds like I'm opening a body. Oh, this one time I got to cut open a pig heart. It was fun. Also frog dissection. Me and my group named our frog Bertha. Anyway, sew the bodice pieces in the places where you would sew a bodice piece. Next, cut out a giant sleeve piece. It doesn't have to be precise as long as it's big so that it will become puffy. Now either sewing machine or hand sew a basting stitch along the top curve, then um, just kind of pull it. You know, I don't know how to explain a puff sleeve and therefore just look at this diagram that I put on the screen. Then I took some brown fabric and I made this kind of cuff at the end. Like, you know that finishing cuff at the end of a sleeve? Yeah, that's what I did. Then I sewed it on and there's a puff sleeve. Make a second one and attach them. I know you're smart enough to know how without my mediocre and- Oh my, why are my siblings? Anyway, sew on the puff sleeves, which I don't know why it took me longer to sew them on than it took for me to make the entire rest of the dress. I probably shouldn't be saying this because I'm not giving a tutorial but um i'm surprised that worked <laughs> why does it make my head look so small it's time to attach the two pieces together. Just get the bodice and the skirt and attach them together. Or look at this diagram. I guess what I've learned is that if I don't want to explain something, I'll just make a diagram of it. And then I let the sewing machine eat the dress. Sorry, I was trying to think of an interesting way to say that I sewed it using my sewing machine. Now there's this opening in the front of the dress, so I just marked it with a safety pin and I cut out an opening. Oh, also for the sleeve stripe, I cut a strip of white felt then I just sewed it onto the brown part. To make the collar, I cut out a piece of brown fabric which is actually left over from my Nezuko cosplay and that's unnecessary information. Next, I cut out an opening in the middle. I don't know how to explain this but I'm sure you can understand by looking at the video. Also, I cut out a slit in the back because I don't know her uniform has a slit in the back. And that's the shape of the collar. And then I hemmed all the outside edges. And that's how it looks so far. Now we can attach the collar to the dress. I started by pinning it at the top and oh wow, it's almost as if that didn't take me like two hours to figure out. And then I decided to hand sew it on very badly but it's fine because no one will see except for 
the 10 people that end up watching this video. And here it is attached. To make that other part of her collar, I took another piece of brown fabric, doubled it over, then I pinned the curved line onto it, and then I followed the line with sewing. Cut off the extra fabric and cut slits along the curve. Flip it right side out and you know what, maybe I should start ironing my stuff. Just like the sleeve, I cut out a piece of white felt and I sewed it on but I forgot to film that part. Anyway, I cut off all the extra parts that were uneven. I turned it back inside out then sewed down the edges as you can see here. And then I flipped it back right side out. Also, I finally ended up ironing it. I attached it to the inside of the collar like this and I also added snap buttons so that, you know, I could put it on and off and stuff. Also, I cut out circles out of felt then I stuck it on on the ends because, I don't know, she has those. So I didn't have enough patience to make the dress a zipper dress so I made it slightly bigger so I could put it on but consequently, the waist doesn't fit perfectly. So then I sewed a long piece of fabric that could fit my waist then I attached token eyes to the ends so that it could be a belt. To make her bow, I cut out a strip of fabric and I'm really surprised that this fabric has lasted me this long. I thought I'd have run out by now. Anyway, cut that out and also cut out the same thing but in brown. Pin them together and sew down both sides so that they kind of become a dual colored ribbon. Then do the same but with beige on both sides and also make it longer. Now take your two very flat pet snakes and flip- Why is my do my siblings go up the stairs so noisily? Sorry. You'll notice that when they're right side out, they are no longer very flat snakes so I hate to have to tell you this but you're gonna have to iron them. And iron them I did. And I drew on brown stripes but then I was too nervous to do them on camera so here's me pretending to do that. Also this isn't a fabric marker, it's just a normal brown marker because Nezuko used up all my brown fabric marker ink. So unfortunately this can't get wet but hey it's kind of like Yashira except instead of turning into a cute fish, my cosplay just gets ruined. Now take the half beige half brown piece and just make it into a bow like I show on screen because I don't know how to explain it and therefore I shan't and oh wait look it's done. Now the bow has these brown things on the end so to make that I started by tracing the width of the ribbon and then I just kind of winged it and made a template. Oh yeah I need to tell you guys something so a while ago I made an avocado shake so the whole afternoon the only thing in my brain has been free shavokadu but no one in my family gets it and I'm too nervous to text my friends so I just wanted to tell someone. Okay back to the tutorial. Once you've cut out your template it probably would be best to do this with brown felt but I didn't have brown felt at the time so I'm just using this really dumb method where I stick double-sided tape onto some fabric and then I trace the template. So there are two forms of the shape that I'm cutting out. The first one is just the template itself in the brown fabric and then the second one is the template but with dabs on the side. I'll show you later. Oh wait, um, later is now. So to start putting it on, take the one with dabs and peel off the double-sided tape then just kind of stick it like what I show here and then fold over the tabs. You may need to cut off the extra like I'm doing because it might show with the other one. Then take the other piece without the tabs then just kind of stick it and cut off the extra and there repeat it on the other end and then i cut out circles from felt and stuck it on and now it's time to put the bow together i made this brown strip of fabric and measured it around the bow so i knew how big i wanted it to be then i glued it in place then all that's left to do is slip it onto the bow and take the other ribbon piece and slip it through as well you can also secure it by sooner gluing but i was too lazy and here's the finished bow also one more thing i stuck on brown fabric rectangles to make fake pockets because i didn't feel like making real pockets at the time i'll do those next time to make her skull pin, I made this template. You can screenshot and print it if you want, and I just trace it onto some pieces of cardboard. I cut out, stacked, and glued them to make this, which is essentially a lot of pieces with the eyes cut out and one piece at the bottom with the eyes not cut out. Before I painted it, I covered it with a layer of glue, and I still don't know why I did this, but my past self seemed to think it was necessary, so I guess. After that, I painted it with toothpaste and squid ink. Just kidding, squids kinda scare me. And here's what the finished pin looks like. As you can see, I carved two slits down the bottom, and I shoved the safety pin through the back. For the hair clips, I cut and painted pieces of cardboard, then I poked a hole in the brown one and put it on top of the white one, but then I realized I didn't really like them, so I made them again but in brown felt and I sewed the tiny pearl in the middle. I taped the clip on the back and it stayed on fine, so those are my hair clips. Welcome to this corner, an area of my room I didn't realize was a good filming space until 5 years of living in this house. <laughs> well, there goes my filming. 20 minutes later and now the weather's clear. Thanks, Hinama, no? <laughs> So as you can see, I made the dress a bit big so that I could, you know, put it on and not have to sew a zipper. But because of that, the dress doesn't fit my waist. And that's why I made this belt. Also, if you're wondering why there's a bunch of empty hooks here, it's because I'm an overbearing perfectionist and I wanted a nice background. So I took out all my bags and hats and threw them on the floor. So now my room's a mess, but at least we have a nice background. So as you can see, the belt kind of makes it really wrinkly. So I just shove all the extra fabric to the back. And hopefully, no one will see. Okay, so for the bow, I kind of tied this thing on. I know it looks really ugly, but I'll fix it later. This reminds me of like in school when you wear IDs. Sometimes the teachers are like, hey, you should put your ID under your collar. But I never did that because that was too much work, I guess. I realize how irrelevant that story actually is. Yay, the bow.
It's like my favorite part. I mean, everything's my favorite part. And I mean, you're done if you're cosplaying Ayoli. I, I, mm -mm. Aoi. Well then. I like how Yashiro introduces this kind of cute, weak character. I'm saying like quotation marks because she's not actually weak. She's really cool and strong as heck. But yeah, she's introduces like really sweet, but she also has a literal skull pinned to her chest. And I just think that's cool. Or maybe it's symbolism. Who knows? Alright, that was objectively too much time to be spending pinning a skull to my chest. I'm gonna be using my real hair because I don't actually have a real Yashiro wig. Also, I'm insecure about wearing wigs in videos, so I make decisions based on my insecurities. Plus, like, if Yashiro was a real Japanese girl, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have naturally white and green hair. Oh yeah, she has tights. Alright, tights are on, my legs are insulated, and I'm very sweaty. I genuinely hope you can't hear my sister screaming downstairs. I don't know why, I find it really cool that Yashiro has radish legs, and I do have... I feel like this isn't puffy enough. So here's a skirt my mom made for me two years ago because she said polka dots were trendy. So yeah, hmm. It's puffier now. Yeah, I guess I'm done with this. <laughs> really like this cosplay a lot. It makes me... Oh, wait. Look, we're matching. <laughs> I think this is the favorite dress thing I've ever made from scratch. <laughs> and yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks humans for tolerating me this long.